I like I enjoyed today's service, man. I really I really like that. I, mean, I like the way that girl put that thing together today. That was something else. Yeah. All right. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon, this afternoon. Praise and thank you, Lord Jesus, that we'll be able to go through this and uh and and get something out of it or we'll see some things that we might not have seen before, Lord Jesus and understand some ways that the Lord deals with us and our burdens. As our lesson fact says, he's a burden bearer. Praise and thanks for sick and afflicted, Lord Jesus, that you touch and heal, Lord Jesus. Bring more to the foe. Let us increase our knowledge and understanding that we can pass it on to others, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, amen. All righty. We're on uh, lesson two for this 31st of July, um, our burden bearer. And so we realize that it's speaking of God is our burden bearer. He helps us to carry our load of difficulty, worry, and decision. Uh, and, and, and like I said, we use that as like an, an example of like the weight of a of a cargo ship, um, that that cargo ship carries a heavy load, and this is what God is there to help us to carry a big load. For example, uh, so we can, uh, so as when we are heavily loaded with a press with oppression or trouble or or things like that. God will carry and uphold us in our burdens of life. The lesson I do, I will cast my cares upon the Lord. And we know that David wrote these things. And, and as we study in the lesson, we'll see the reason why he did that. Um, so he chose God uh, to, um, to help him through his problems. And uh, he'll help us through a, a way for us from our problems also. And so we find the truth about God. God will bear the burdens we, that we surrender to him. Um, he will support or help carry or hold firm our problems. If we yield or stop resisting, the help of the Lord, then we will receive more from him. So, so many times that when we run into problems that we tend to try and do them ourselves instead of letting God have them, and maybe God's trying to work them out because he's got them, but we resist him. And so we need to surrender those things to him that, you know, he will help us get out of these situations or help us with the situations. The focus verse is Psalms 55 and 22. Cast thy burden upon thee, and he shall sustain thee, and shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And so through our problems upon, uh, so if we throw our problems upon the Lord, he shall and he will help us, or he'll hold us up. He'll support us, and uh, it, 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 he does these things to keep our mind and our spirit in in the in the ways of, of God. When we realize that when this was wrote, we find that like David, or like King David, a man who was in distress, mourning, he was sighing, he was wounded apart, and. Uh, he was expecting death at any time. And uh, we realize when all this is going on, is in the cave, we find out that he was surrounded by his enemies. So he had a lot of things that was going on. And through the other things with through his sons and that were that were going on. He, he and 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 King Solomon, he really had a he had a burden that was upon him. And so 
we'll find in, in our lesson text on day one. Well, let's just let's just give a let's just give a quick overview of this thing here. We'll find out that um uh in the story of Hushia, Shea, and Apilophon in Second Samuel, um we we'll find that it was a, it, there was a plot that was there because, um, and it was showed that Absalom's rebellion against David, and and so we realized that uh, David's son Annan had a lust for his sister Tamar, and and so he raped her, and and upon the uh, and so upon the advice of a friend, Amon. Uh, or, or upon the advice of, advice of a friend, yeah, Amon trapped and raped Tamar. And uh, we find out that Absalom murdered his half brother for what he, in the advantage of his sister. And so then what goes on that uh, Pilipon, who was um, uh, one of David's, uh, I guess more or less his prophet or whatever, whoever he did was. He um he worked against David, and uh, as a result of that, um, there was a lot of trouble that arose out of it. Where uh, Absalom tried to take over power as as king and caused David to run as sure like the same as Samuel. You know, they they they, they was wanting to kill his own dad so anyway so much for that <laughs> on day one that's a quick overview of, of some things that were taking place anybody got anything just, just smack me with it i know one thing i forgot to do before i took off on this um the icebreaker what is the difference between a burden the lord gives us and the burden life places on us are there similarities? Anybody? Mm, okay. Are, were you asking a question on that? Yeah, I was asking a question on that. You wanted to know that, say it again, I'm trying to read the, the icebreaker. What is the difference between the... What's the difference between a burden the Lord gives us and a burden life places upon us. Are there any similarities? That's a good question. I mean, I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> well, I, I basically, um, I just more or less went on like what the story said. Um, I know, I know the Lord can place things upon us that if we don't do the things the way that, well, that can't really say that's a burden though. Maybe I shouldn't have asked that question. I didn't really dig into it deep enough myself. Cause I'm <laughs> but anyway, the burdens of our life, I mean, there's just so many things that, you know, are, are, Going to work every day could be a, a, a in, in in a job that that are troublesome to you could be a big burden. Um, maybe the way people treat you, or 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 the way people perceive you, can be a burden to you. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, to me, Absalom was a was a burden to David. Um, David himself was a burden to Bathsheba's husband, you know, the way that he did things. And basically, things like that. But let's move on away from that. I should have gotten into that a little deeper with my own lesson. All right, day one. Uh, we find that 2 Samuel 17, uh, uh, 15 through 22. And so 
we know that these were things that were going on between David and, and his, his own people. It said, Hosea said to Zodak the, uh, and to Abiathar the priest, and thus did uh, Hitha, hmm, these big crazy were Hithophel, counsel Absalom, and the elders of Israel. And so we know that they can uh, he canceled the uh, or counseled uh, uh, Absalom, and he he gave him the wrong counseling. But no, I take that back. He counseled David and told David to uh, not to lie that night in the plains of the wilderness, but for him to get up and get out of there quickly, unless he be swallowed up or overtaken. And um, so he had uh, Jonathan and Ahibal uh, stay in Ingral for the night, not to not to be seen and come and come into the city. And a wench went out and told them, they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, and they both of them uh, went away quickly and came to a man's house in Burem, uh, which had a well and a port, and uh, whither they went down. So the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, spread on the ground, he spread ground corn over it, and, uh, it was not known. When Absalom appeared, the servants came to the woman of the house and said, where is um, Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And, and the woman told them that uh, they had gone over the brook of water. And when they sought, uh, they could not find them and they returned to Jerusalem. And it came to pass after they were departed that they came up out of the well and went and told David and said unto David, Arise, pass quickly over the waters, for thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose and the people that were with him, and they passed over the Jordan by the morning light and lacked none of them. There lacked not one of them that were not going over Jordan. So we find out that. I, I kind of like the way that Bible Insight kind of put that, is that because what happened here, the the priest lied uh, about some things, and and Absalom, no, the priest warned, he took and warned um, uh, David's people that Absalom was was uh, coming out after him and so um they they uh they they hid from him but what they heard you know they let they got back to david to which was allowed david to escape and so they kind of put this on like like a it was like a stage or a movie theater and they said you know like on the front stage uh things take place, the performance unfolds, but on the backstage is where things that you don't see that take place, where everything, the props and all form to set up things for the way that you want them to, to work. The lighting, um, uh, uh, and it all takes takes place backstage. And so the, the, therefore, because of what happened, what goes on front stage, the audience enjoys. And so the action unfolds on front stage because of what unfolds on the backstage. And so in this, we find out that what happened, uh, David escaped Absalom's safety on the other side of, of the Jordan River was God positioned an undercover adversary, a loyal priest, young men willing to risk their lives, a woman and a well, and all the events in uh, Samuel 17 and 14. Yet David was oblivious while hiding and waiting for news. He was unaware how God was working behind the scenes. Take heart, God is working even 
if we do not see him front stage. Okay, anything, anything on that? So those things that happened and they were in hiding and they was in fear, it just shows you that God was in control, that God was being his burden bearer the whole time all this was happening. Psalm 55, one through eight, which is day two. And it talks about David praying. He says, give, give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, hear me. I mourn, I'm in my complaint, and then I make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. They cast iniquity, iniquity upon me and wrath, they hate me. My heart is sore pained within. Uh, the terrors of death are falling upon me. Fearfulness, trembling are come upon me. Horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings that a, like a dove for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then would I wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Shalom. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and the tempest. So those problems that he was having, he's saying right here that if he was a dove or a bird, or he could fly away from all these problems. And, and, and he escaped from all the, the, the turmoil and, and, and the trouble that was come about. But would he really, if he did it himself, think about that, he might just wind up uh, flying into more trouble because he didn't allow God to do it. Um, so we see here that David described his feelings uh, of fright, terror, and fullness, and, and all. Um, and so, uh, one thing that we find in that in Bible insight is a Hebrew poetic technique for revealing the depth of David's anxiety and fear to attempt to distinguish separate psychological phenomena here is to the miss that literary power. David wished for his life in the wilderness is also another indication of the depth of the crisis. Traditionally, to traditionally, the wilderness is a place of trial and temptation, but here it is a place of relief. So we find out you think about when, De when, when, when Jesus himself went into the wilderness, he was tempted to Satan for 40 days. Uh, or they went with the, well, yeah, and so he, he, he went in there. So that shows you what kind of things you find in the wilderness. But he chose to go into an area where things were uncertain to get away from other things that were uncertain. <laughs> um, and that daily devotion, one thing I underlined over here, over a lifetime of living for God and dealing with fear, David learned to condition his fear, respond to the emotionally and physically exposed before God in prayer. Vulnerably and openness with God about the depth of our emotion is where trust in God's faithfulness is built. In vulnerable prayer, we find strength regardless of the situation. Day three, let's read Psalm 55, nine through 15. And uh, it says, destroy O Lord the divided and divide their tongue. I have seen violence and strife in thy city. And that's kind of like, it gives me the mind of, of the Tower of Babel. Yeah, because it, it talks about that in here, that if they are confused and they can't understand each other, how they're going to overtake it. Day and night, they go about, open the walls thereof, mischief also, and sorrows are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit, gal, depart not from her street. For it is not an enemy that reproaches me, then I could have borne, borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. 
then I would have hid myself from him. But this, but it was thou, a man, mine equal, my God, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. We walked under the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick to hell for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. So boy, I tell you, yeah, that was some that was some harsh punishment that he, he wished upon those individuals, but but they were, like I say, they had been friends and, and they did things together. And yet and still they uh they turned their backs on him and they and they, they they sought to overthrow him and and overtake him and i'm sure that these things happen a lot in today's world that's probably why so many churches split like they do because of, of, of things like this that somebody doesn't like what someone else is doing or how a, a pastor or or whatever runs a church and so they figure they can do it better and they try to overtake things it's not going to work I wrote in the daily devotion, I, I, I seen one thing I like right here. It says, one thing that the guy wrote is, it is easier to forgive an enemy than to forgive a friend. And uh, so David revealed it was neither an enemy nor someone who hated him who hurt him. But David was accustomed to having enemies and being hated. So he already knew how to handle those Serene uh, scenario, and um, so David poured out his uh, his prayer to God, and uh, and and so that that betrayal and wickedness that he had uh, of, of of once being a feeling of trust, now were were searing feelings of betrayal, and so. Instead of uh, uh, seeking vengeance, David prayed strongly for God to avenge him. And when we feel fear or betrayal, it is important for us to remember Romans 12 and 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Just be still and that avenge and and let god avenge you in his timing and in his own way so question at the bottom of that page it says reflection and prayer Re prayer what can we do to apply this principle to our life today that's like in that daily devotion of if somebody does us wrong through prayer, how can we handle that? One thing I wrote down there in life, a lot of times it is not the enemy you that that uh, that you really need to worry about. It's that one that stabs you in the back, the one in your own ranks those beside you even those you work on or live with or even go to church with some of those hurt you the worst than an enemy anything else anybody okay <laughs> day four uh, we see that uh it's, it's see that David said, as for me, I call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening, morning, noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them, and he that abideth of old, Salah. Because they have no changes thereof, they fear not God. He hath put forth his hand against such as to as be a presence with him. He hath broken his covenant. The word of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. 
his word were softer than oil, yet there but yet were they drawn sore. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee, and shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down unto the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Boy, and he was he just flat out point just told him how it was that uh some of your enemies, man, can make things sound great to you. Make you sound like you're the best. Like you said, it was like butter in your ear, like warm butter being smooth across a piece of bread. <laughs> and so, you know, they 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 just they just channelize you with their tongue on things, but then all of a sudden, man, they cut your head off. That that's pretty tough. Uh so we find out that he was asking God to uh, to respond to them, what they did, and uh, cast them into a pit of destruction. And um, so we need to learn to uh, live in God's space for grace. Uh, the space between God, what God sees and God's response to the wickedness is for a little space of grace. It is time for the wicked to repent and genuinely change. The space for grace is something we rejoice in when we are in the receiving end. But when those who hurt as are in God's space for grace, we may feel like God is blind or deaf to the wickedness. Remember the same space for grace God has for us is the same space God has for the wicked. So that's where I guess I see it. It said, love your enemy, you know, because they need prayer also. Okay. Uh, the day five, that first Peter five and seven, cast all your cares upon him, uh, for he cares for you. Uh, we find it in, in, in the reference to Psalm five and 22, cast his burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. The word for care is translated burden. Uh, note the, that this promise is given to the, in the context of exhortation of humility. Implying this is a Christian path to for freedom from worry and care. Only the one who humbly relieves, relies on God alone for strength can legibly hope, for, hope to experience his wonderful care. Um, we find out that King David was uh, demonstrated humility in admitting failure and learning from his mistakes. He then won the uh, uh, he just then won the war without gloating. Uh, so today we live in a culture centered around fame, pride, humanism, a culture where humility is often mistaken for weakness. Society promotes seeking honor for oneself by being overconfident and recognized for what you know, what you own or do. While the world teaches humility as weakness, God's word exalts humility as strength. It takes strength to value others over yourself, to admit shortcomings, to ask for help, and to honor others. In God's kingdom culture, pride, not humility, is a sign of weakness. And so uh, we and, and we went into like the Psalms 55 and 22 in the lesson of context. Um, we know that David wrote about the writings of the trail of the son Absalom, um, his running from King Saul. And so when David penned Psalms, it surely must reflect the kind of pain and suffering he endured at the betrayal of his own son. David knew the best way to come out of the anguish and deal with the pain was to cast his cares upon the Lord. And he knew the only, that the only sustaining power of the Lord could deliver him from the suffering and betrayal. Um, David wrote, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Psalm 5 and 22. All right. Group discussion.
Okay. And so in that group discussion, it has got these questions. Uh, well, that we well we we seen them before the little and the other book had the gray the gray light uh, the gray box that had the stuff in it. And we know that it's talking in and, and this first one he's talking about a physical counsel and betrayal and uh, Absalom sought to kill his father. And so in this um uh, we know that uh, David allowed Absalom uh, to return, even though um, he knew what he was up to. Absalom uh, reunited with his father, and um, we realized that was a destiny of trouble. Absalom began to gain influence among the men of Israel, and he sought to usurp the throne of David, eventually re uh, relocating to Hebron and declaring him to be king so with this have you ever experienced betrayal at the hands of a trusted friend what were your emotions during that unfortunate experience um for me um, sometimes when you trust a friend you 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 tell them something that isn't for everybody's ear and then when they get mad at you they throw that thing up to your face and at at the time you're like what it's it's almost like they use that as revenge back to you and you know and sometimes we want to lash back out but the main thing is is just to know that really they weren't really a trusted friend they were just kind of waiting to use that against you you know, um, sometimes you have to be very careful who you um, let let know something that is really, really um, unspoken to everybody else. You know, Did, didn't like it at all. Didn't like it at all. And you can't trust everybody. And, and so you got to be careful what you say. And uh, sometimes it's probably best to... Uh, not even say it, you know. Um, people have a tendency of when you say something to them to to repeat what you said, but add uh, a lot about how they feel and get 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 somebody told or or get them get them jumped on not only with what you said but what they wanted to Im impose themselves on on individuals. So you got to be careful. All right. Number two, contemplate the effects of your daily time of prayer and reflect on the Lord. How does it strengthen? How does it strengthen and prepare you for a daily spiritual challenge? What might be a negative effect of failing to maintain that daily time in the Lord? And what that's and what that's referring to there is um, is like David and and how his men escaped. Um, and so it being sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit and uh, avoiding um, uh, like spiritual enemies and pray the word of God and commitment and faithfulness to the house of God. Uh, and then that helped empower us to go on the offensive against Satan and his and his uh, men, 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 minions. Okay. But. How, how does that kind of stuff um, strengthen and prepare you for daily spiritual challenge? And what, what might be the negative effects of failing to maintain a daily time with the Lord? Um, well, you, if you don't maintain connection with him, you're not going to have much power. You get to know him by maintain, maintaining an everyday or having an everyday conversation with him. Okay. And it does. It keeps your mind, it keeps your mind at, at, at peace and at ease about a lot of stuff. Um, I, I, I find myself <laughs> through 
you're really paying attention to music now and listening to what the words they say and stuff. And, and, it, it, and it, it, it's got a lot of stuff that, that really can help you out. You know, they're saying a lot of stuff about, about the Bible, but yet still about a lot of their uh, emotions or, or things that have happened to them. I, and I think maybe that's why I know that, that, that Shimon, she, she listens to a lot of this music and and I, I I will I will tag on a song that that she hit because there'd be something that was said in that that what that was powerful that she shared with other people. And so, um, let's go to number three. How do you handle troublesome burdens you experience through life? Or did I say that on that? How do you handle troublesome uh, burdens you experience through life's trials? What would you find to be your best course of action at this time? How I think it's the same thing, like we said before, um, just pray. Um, since without praying, I, like you said, I'm a song person, so I'm constantly playing music. Um, even if I don't feel like praising God, if I put on them songs or those musics, it just, it makes you get into, into the mood. It makes you want to connect. So it starts open that experience of wanting to praise. So um, I just try to always praise my way through it. Save up praises for when I'm getting ready to go through a low or, you know, or something that's getting ready to come up. That way you um, you have the power to make it through. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We got, um, number four, then. Contemplate the adage facing your fears with faith how might that approach help you to live a victorious christian life 